We have gone over all the tests to determine whether a series converges or diverges. Now we want to consider the interesting case the series actually alternates in sign. So consider a series of the form where all of the terms are alternating, plus, minus, plus, minus, or something where I have negative 1 to a power. If we assume then that the a's themselves are non-negative, the limit is approaching 0, and the terms are actually getting smaller, these last two basically are the nth term test, then we can have a situation where I am alternating in sign but getting smaller. We may actually get convergence when the non-alternating didn't converge. So what we want to do is consider what will it take for a series to converge just on the fact that it alternates. So let's start by considering the sum of the first two n terms. Okay, so I'm starting with a1 minus a2, and then a3 minus a4, and as I continue, the last two of this would be a2n minus 1 minus a2n. So if I think about grouping these in pairs, I have this finite total. This will be greater than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to 0, all the way down the line because we said the terms are actually getting smaller in size. So we do know that this sum is greater than 0. Now let's rearrange the sum. and Let's write it this way. Let's put the next two together. So minus a2 plus a3 would be minus a2 minus a3 minus a4 minus a5 minus a2n minus 2 minus a2n minus 1, and then finally minus a2n. So if we distribute the negatives, we'll see we'll get the original thing back. And once again, because the terms are getting smaller, we know that each of these quantities are greater than or equal to 0. So notice what we have now. The sum of the first two n terms is a1, which is a positive value, minus a positive quantity, minus a positive quantity, all the way down the line. That means that S2n, which we already said was greater than or equal to 0, is actually less than or equal to A1. Now, the interesting thing about this is, it doesn't matter how many terms I go out, if I add up the first two terms or the first two million terms, that sum will always be smaller than the very first term of the series. So finally, what that means is, if I want to take a limit and say, what is the infinite sum? We know that s, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of my partial sum, well, in this case, we'll take the even partial sum, we know that this value is less than or equal to a1. So it turns out, if I have an alternating series, regardless of what the non-alternating series does, if the series alternates, all I have to show is that the terms are getting smaller and approaching zero, and the non-alternating series, whether it converge or diverge, will have no effect on this guy. If it takes the alternating nature to get it to converge, then we call that type of convergence conditional. If the original series would have converged anyway, without the alternating nature, we call that absolute convergence, kind of like absolute value of every term. Now, look at the posted notes I have. I have several examples online that walk you through the step-by-step -step process of determining whether an alternating series converges or diverges. Also, at this point, we have finished all of the material that will be on the next exam. So again, continue to watch the video lectures, continue to go over the notes, and stay ahead of the game.